Sound techs and electric guitar players use a lot of the same words. And an electric guitar is basically a sound system all in itself. So today we're gonna demystify some of the language and terminology so that you can be a great team player with the sound tech and the electric guitar player to get great tones and a great performance. But first, what do you throw an electric guitar player that's drowning? His amplifier. I guess that makes the case for modelers. If you're a sound tech and you've mixed a great electric guitar player, it's awesome. You put a mic in front of the amp, you push up your fader, and you get great dynamics, great tone, no matter what the part of the song or if it needs to be clean or dirty or anywhere in between, they just take care of all of that and move beautifully and dynamically with the rest of the band. If you've got a less experienced electric guitar player, it can make you want to cover your ears and pull down the fader and hope you never see them again. So to avoid that, let's talk about what goes into electric guitar tone so maybe you can offer some constructive suggestions after you've gained their trust and get a great sound out of your electric guitar. On a soundboard, we're trying to amplify mics and instruments that come in and then we want it to be really, really clean. We get to adjust the tone with EQ, adjust the balance, and maybe add compression to make things fit and sit in their place in the mix, but we don't really want to make it distort at the soundboard most of the time. Digital consoles especially sound really bad when they're clipping, so we want to bypass all of that and keep our console clean and noise-free. But that's not the case with the electric guitar. It doesn't take a musical genius to hear the difference between a clean jazz guitar <laughs> and a distorted, fuzzed-out guitar. We'll talk about fuzz in just a minute if you aren't familiar yet. An electric guitar player has their instrument and an amplifier with a speaker and a power amp built in and maybe some pedals in between. And even if they're using an amp simulator, it's gonna be the same principles that apply either way. It should behave like a tube amp does. So electric guitars can play chords down low, they can play chords in the middle or chords up high, and they can play leads or melodies in different sections of the guitar. All of this requires a bunch of different tones in order to sound right. So there's a lot of switches and knobs that can get us there, and I'm gonna walk you through a few of them so that you can just get a roadmap. If you wanna go deep, I recommend checking out Rhett Scholl or Josh Scott and the JHS show. They are masters at explaining all this stuff so that you can understand it. Go check them out. At the very beginning though, we have the guitar itself. The guitar is one of the biggest factors in the tone of the instrument. And the biggest factor in the guitar's tone is the pickup itself. The guitar uses magnetic induction to sense the vibration of the metal guitar strings and turns that into an electrical signal that then goes out the cable of the guitar. Pickups closer to the bridge of the guitar will pick up a higher proportion of the higher overtones of those strings. And if you wanna go deep into string theory, I would be happy to, but not in this video. That tends to mean that they're just brighter and maybe to the point that they're harsh where pickups that are closer to the neck are closer to the fundamental frequency of where those strings are ringing. So this will tend to have warmer sounds. You can also combine different pickups and some have a third pickup in the middle. So there's already a lot of tonal options even before we've left the guitar. Which pickup the player chooses depends on what type of part they're playing at that certain time. For lower chords that have complex harmonics, it might be better to pick the bridge pickup because you're picking up more of those top frequencies that help each note stand out a little bit better. As the guitar player plays higher up the neck, those notes can sound thinner. So we might change to the neck pickup that gives it a warmer or fuller sound. The type of pickup has a big impact on the sound as well. And I'm just gonna separate it into two broad categories. And if you wanna nerd out in the comments below, you can. But let's start with the Strat or single coil type pickup. These tend to be a little bit brighter and have a little less output than their counterpart, the humbucker. The humbucker does what it says. It eliminates hum that gets picked up from the electromagnetic signal or electromagnetic interference. The output of the humbucker is a little bit hotter and a little bit darker. 
a hotter output means that it will distort a little bit faster or it needs less boost from the other stages along the way to get more distortion. Of course, it's art, so all of this is subject to interpretation and your mileage may vary, but these are generalities and if you want to roast me, at least do it respectfully. Just like with a mix on the console, gain stage really matters in the way that our electric guitar works and sounds. So the guitar is the first part and the amplifier is the last part, but in between we've got guitar pedals. I'm just going to talk about three categories of guitar pedals, harmonic, modulation, and time. Harmonic pedals will change either the level of the signal going into the amplifier, causing it to distort either more or less, or it could clip or have some distortion internally to that pedal itself. I like to think about harmonic pedals as salsa, so bear with me for a second. A clean boost pedal is kind of like tomato sauce. It's going to add something, but maybe not any spice. An overdrive pedal is kind of like mild salsa. It can add a little bit of hair on it, but the medium salsa is distortion. Now, you might think, man, distortion? That should be pretty hefty. But wait, there's the habanero ghost chili salsa called buzz. Harmonic pedals also tend to have a little bit of EQ inside them because when they get overdriven too much, it changes the tonal balance of the guitar compared to what a clean guitar should sound like, and it can sound woofy or wooly or muddy. That's not really good, so they'll put a mild high-pass filter on the inside of this pedal to make it sound a little bit cleaner. On the other end of the spectrum, you can use a low-pass filter to take care of some of the hair or fuzz or noise kind of signal that's coming from the distortion or the overdrive. If it sounds too scratchy and maybe like white noise, maybe just turn down the filter or turn up the filter and turn down the tone. I don't know. They operate in all different ways, but they're basically a low-pass filter. And this warrants attention as well. Sometimes a guitar player needs to have a boost when they're playing a melodic part compared to when they're playing a rhythmic part. Because at that point, the guitar is now taking the lead element in the arrangement. It needs to come up in level. If it doesn't, you can always ride it up with the fader, but it's always a good thing when that guitar pops out just a little bit when it needs to. Now, modulation is our next category of pedals, and this is changes over time. So we can have tremolo, which varies the volume over time, up and down, maybe you have different shapes even, or there can be chorus or vibrato, which changes the pitch up and down. Another type of modulation is the phaser, which introduces a small delay that changes over time, and that very short delay causes some of the frequencies to add together or cancel each other out, giving this kind of sound. Now, personally, I like these types of effects to be a little bit more mild, but it's art, so you can do what you want and go crazy. But if it's distracting in the mix, maybe you can ask your player to turn down the intensity or the mix of some of these modulation pedals. Now, time-based effects like reverb and delay add a sense of space or repeats to the music. So you can get a galloping kind of feel by a dotted eighth note delay, or you can make something totally washed out and sound like a synth pad with a shimmer reverb. Sometimes I get asked if the guitar player should send a totally dry signal to the sound tech so that they can add the reverb and delay. And there are situations when this might be helpful, but most of the time I want to have all the reverb and delay sent by the guitar player. It can sound funny if it doesn't have any reverb or space on it, especially if you're using an amp modeler or an amp sim and there's no ambience coming from having a mic on something on stage. A lot of times you need an appropriate change in the reverb or delay between songs, and I'd rather let the player take care of that than try to manage that at the soundboard. And again, great sound is a team effort, so sometimes you have to give some feedback to the guitar player, sometimes the guitar player asks for feedback on their own, and that's the mark of a true professional if they know what they want and they know that you have a great insight into what's fitting in the mix, that can make for a great relationship and some great tones. Just yelling, hey, your sound is muddy, doesn't help anybody. After the pedals, we have the amplifier. And as a side note, some of these pedals from before can go in the effects loop of the amplifier, which is between the preamp stage and the power amp stage, but you don't need to get all nerdy into that. Just know sometimes stuff can get rearranged. So gain structure matters with electric guitar as well as on your soundboard. When we get to the amplifier, this is where we can run the amp clean or dirty or overdriven. Or a lot of guitar players like to have that middle ground that they call edge of breakup. This is where if they pick lightly on their guitar, they get clean tone. 
If they really dig in and hit hard, and they're playing louder just with natural dynamics of the instrument, then they get more distortion and overdrive. For guitar amplifiers, there's basically three flavors of distortion that you can get from the preamp. There's Fender type tubes, there's Marshall type tubes, and there's Vox type tubes. Each of them have their own distinct sound, and learning to recognize it can be really helpful in helping you along your tone journey. The EQ on the amp is also a big variable. Some players like to have a mid-scooped sound, where they turn down the mids, turn up the level a little bit, and turn up the high frequencies. This makes it so that chords down low sound clean, and you can get note definition out of each one. Problem with that is that when they go to play up high, then those notes sound thinner. A guitar is basically a mid-range instrument, and if you turn down all the mid-range, you've basically made the instrument weaker. This is why some guitar players like a mid-boost pedal, where they use a high-pass filter and low-pass filter inside the pedal to make it sound like the mids came forward when it's really just using a high-pass filter and low-pass filter and gain to make it seem like the mids got louder. Other guitar players run their amps a little bit more mid-forward, so they don't like those types of pedals that tend to boost the mids. In case you're wondering, the mids on a guitar are usually around 800 hertz or 1.2K. For mixing on consoles, I'm used to cutting mids to make things cleaner, not boosting mids. That just sounds weird to me, but sometimes you need a little bit more mid-range from your guitar to make it sound normal. Past the EQ, and then maybe through the effects loop if you've got that running, we have the power amp stage, and then finally, the speaker itself. After the power amp, the speaker itself plays a big role in how the guitar sounds. So if they've switched speakers, or if you're using an amp modeler or an IR loader, choosing a different speaker can make a big difference in shaping the way that the tone sounds almost as much as the guitar. And now finally, we've moved some air and we can put a microphone in front of it. So if you wonder why your guitar tone doesn't sound great, it might not have to do with your mic placement. It might have to do with all the stuff that came before it. Now let's go over some of the language that both electric guitar players and sound techs use, but they have very different meanings. For a sound tech, gain means how much we turn up the preamp in order to get our signal up to line level. But for a guitar player, gain usually means how much overdrive or distortion your amp is getting between the pedals, the amplifier, and all that. Another thing that shows up on both consoles and on a guitar player's pedal board is compression. And to understand compression, we need to know that as we drive more gain into the amplifier, we are making it so that we can't turn up that signal as loud as the guitar's input is coming into it. What that does is it makes it so that the lower level signals on the guitar sound louder. And this gives the perception of sustain. But if you're playing cleanly and you wanna have more sustain, a compressor pedal can help bring up the lower level signals of your guitar without having it to go into distortion. A compressor pedal can also even out the amount that the different pick levels are hitting the distortion or overdrive, so that makes it more consistent in the tone that they're getting, even if their playing isn't quite as consistent. Now let's go on to the noise gate. Remember how we talked about humbucker pickups reject electromagnetic interference? But sometimes you just love the sound of single coil pickups and they sound great, and you want to drive them into overdrive, and it's glorious, you love the tone. But then there's the noise when you're not playing. So you can insert a noise gate as a pedal before all your distortion so that that hum goes away. But it's easier to have it on your pedal board rather than on the console, because the more that you can turn it down before it's got all that gain and compression, the easier it's gonna to be to get rid of the noise. Other pro players will just ride a volume pedal. When they play a phrase, they turn up the pedal. When they're done playing, they turn it back down. That becomes kind of an auto gate, and then they don't have to worry about the noise factor. There are a ton of other fun tone words to talk about with electric guitars, but I'm gonna let you guys define those down in the comments. And remember, keep it kind and polite. We don't want any bobos around here. So now I'm gonna read a list of words you can define down below. Bite, quacky throaty, smooth, woofy, bloom, aggression, P90, snappy, PAF, clon centaur, tube screamer, transparent, John Mayer, the Bethel sound, U2, saturated. That's probably enough to keep you busy for a while. As always, remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves humming the kick drum. If you want some tips for mic placement, EQ, and compression on your electric guitar after it gets to the console, 
check out my live mixing field guide. You can find it at livemixingfieldguide.com. We'll see you back here next time on Attaway Audio.